Hello, my name is John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the power flow and operation of the new ZF or ZF 9HP uh, 9-speed automatic transaxle. This transaxle is used in uh, a variety of Chrysler, Jeep, Honda, Acura, Land Rover uh, and other uh, vehicles I'm sure uh, in the future but it's a it's a nine speed automatic transaxle and that's a lot of speeds to uh, put into one transaxle and as ZF has done this in a very unique manner um, this transaxle has four planetary gear sets that we'll take a look at here in just a moment but it also uses two dog clutches and I have a separate video on how those dog clutches work uh, in this transaxle but today I want to show you the individual pieces of the uh, entire stack up of the four planetary gear sets and then go through the power flow show you how all nine gears are accomplished uh, as well as reverse and then show you a few other things about the the transaxle that are new or unique um, at least to me that I that I haven't seen before so um, to begin with We've got the input shaft. Uh, we've got the splines here that hook to the turbine in the torque converter. And if that turbine turns, then this input shaft turns. Here on the end of this uh, input shaft, we have dog clutch A. And this dog clutch, if you watch my other video, uh, it uses hydraulic pressure that comes in here on the end to just push it over and then it uses hydraulic pressure over here between these two seals to push it back and so it's just simply a mechanical engaging set of gears that engages with a sun gear or disengages with a sun gear that also happens to be a, a annulus gear as zf calls it so this dog clutch is going to engage and disengage this annulus gear which is also a sun gear so uh, the input shaft actually connect, can connect to three individual uh, components and supply direct power from the, the uh, engine. So we've got a set of splines here on the end. We've got the dog clutch that can engage and disengage. And then there's another set of splines uh, on the front here. The set of splines on the end hooks to a clutch hub for what is known as the as the B clutch. Now there are four clutches in this transaxle and let me spline this input shaft to the the B clutch hub. The B clutch is a clutch that when it engages it's going to transfer power from the torque converter into the clutch hub and cause something to rotate. So the B clutch is a rotating clutch, a driving clutch. And so we've got the B clutch the B clutch obviously has some uh, clutch plates that are going to hook on to uh, these splines here and then they spline into these teeth on the outside here and connect those two pieces together. And so this is going to sit down in here like this. Now this piece here that the, the B clutch connects to also has a set of uh, teeth on the outside of it and it connects to the B clutch which is a brake. So the B clutch splines to the transaxle case and to this housing and the B clutch can when it applies stop this housing from rotating. I'm sorry the C clutch stops this housing from rotating. The B clutch causes it to rotate. So this same housing here with the set of splines that connects to a sun gear can be either driven or held still to accomplish different uh, gear ratios. So we will set this down on here where it goes. Then of course we've got the sun gear for the rear uh, planetary gear set. Um, this is actually the, the P1 uh, gear set. The power flow from the engine comes all the way down to the bottom of this shaft and then works its way back. And so uh, this is the first uh, 
planetary gear sets. So this is our uh, P1 sun gear. And so we're, once again, we're either going to rotate that sun gear or stop it from rotating. We'll rotate it with the B clutch. We'll hold it from rotating with the C clutch. All right, then we also have another annulus gear right here that's in this housing. And then that, on the outside of this housing, there's another set of splines that connects to the D clutch. And the D clutch is also a brake that when it applies, it's going to stop this annulus gear or ring gear from rotating. And so I'm going to take the sun gear back off because we have to have it off to, to set this on. So we'll set this housing down in there. So now in the back end of this uh, transaxle, we've got the um, annulus for the, the, the first planetary gear set and the sun gear for the planetary gear set. Now the only thing we're missing is the planet carrier and the rear two planetary gear sets of this nine speed transaxle use a common planetary carrier. So there are two sets of planet gears. Here's these outer gears. Here's some inner gears. These are not the long and the short gears like you typically would see in like a Raveno gear set, but it has a common carrier, uh, a common planetary carrier like a Raveno gear set does. Now they don't call this a planetary or a Raveno planetary gear set. They call it a epicyclic planetary gear set. Um, a Raveno planetary gear set has a common carrier and can have two separate ring gears and two separate sun gears. This planetary gear set, we have the one sun gear that we've already looked at. We've got the two planet carriers and I'm going to, or the single planet carrier with the two sets of planet gears. So I'm going to set that down in here now. And then we've got the other uh, annulus gear for the the P1, the, the first planetary gear set on the inside of this housing, but it's also the, the P planet, or I'm sorry, the sun gear for the, the P2 gear set. So this is different than a, a Raveno gear set because um, we have the one common sun gear and annulus gear in, in one uh, housing here. So think of this as, as nothing more than a a complex planetary gear set. We're taking basically two simple planetary gear sets and combining them uh, together. Now this transaxle to get nine speeds out of four uh, planetary gear sets does some unique things and I have another uh, video on an eight-speed uh, Ison automatic transmission that Toyota and Cadillac and some other uh, manufacturers use and one of the things they did to get some additional gears out of that transaxle that they're also doing, that ZF is doing with this transaxle, is um, if, you, if you go back to basic planetary gear set operation, which I also have a video on that, um, basic planetary gear set operation has you holding one of the pieces of a gear set from slipping and then turning one of the other three pieces. So the, the three pieces are we've got the, the annulus gear, we've got the planet carrier, and then we've got a sun gear. You typically just hold one of those three. It doesn't matter which one. You turn, you connect engine power to one of the other two, and the remaining one connects to through your uh, powertrain to the wheels and makes the vehicle move. And that you get different gear ratios by doing that. Well, what this transaxle does that's unique is instead of holding some of these components from rotating, they actually allow them to spin at different speeds instead of coming to a full stop. So I've already told you that we have two brakes. We've got the, the C brake and the D brake here that stop these two pieces from rotating. But when they do stop those two pieces from rotating, there's still something else that ends up reacting or rotating as a result of that. Well, they connect that rotating part to one of the other two planetary gear sets that are in here instead of stopping one of those other pieces in the, the other two planetary gear sets. I know that sounds a little confusing, but just think of it as instead of holding 
the other two uh, planetary gear sets and stopping something from rotating in them, they are allowing the components to, in, in essence, slip at a slow speed, which gives you a different gear ratio. A lot of automatic transmissions have trouble codes for undefined gear ratios if a clutch pack is slipping. Well, think of this as being made to slip on purpose, except it's not really slipping. There's no clutch pack slipping. It's using a different planetary gear set to get obtain a different ratio to drive or hold another part of an, an additional planetary gear set to make it um, to make it uh, transfer power. All right. <laughs> I know that's that's a lot to swallow, but um, if if you want to understand this 90-speed transaxle, it, that's how this thing works. So this planet carrier that had the two sets of planet gears also houses the annulus gear or ring gear for our third planetary gear set. Now, the the top the the last two planetary gear sets in this transaxle are identical as far as their gear ratios they have the exact same number of teeth on these ring gears or annulus gears 110 teeth and the exact same uh common sun gear that's shared i think it's 42 teeth on the sun gear uh, it's a common sun gear that goes between the two uh, upper planetary gear sets so they have identical ratios I'm going to take the, the annulus gear and it splines right to the planet carrier of the second, the P2 uh, planetary gear set. And this is where, this is what I was talking about. So now instead of holding this ring gear from rotating, we actually rotate it at a slow speed and then treat the, the rest of the planetary gear set. So here's the planet carrier and ring gear for the second, I'm sorry, for the third and fourth planetary gear sets that sits in here next, um, except I'm missing a bearing. Let me grab that real quick. There it is. <laughs> Wondered where that went. All right, so we've got a bearing. We always have to have bearings. Uh, between every uh, set of rotating components. So I'm going to install the planet carrier, which is connected to the ring gear or annulus gear for the fourth planetary gear set. So I'm going to set that down in here. So now you can see uh, this is annulus gear three, annulus gear four, this is annulus gear number two is down in here, and annulus gear number one is the one that was also a sun gear deep down inside by that F dog clutch. All right, and then our last piece of the planetary gear set, our fourth planetary gear set, is an individual planet carrier. So we have two identical annulus gears or ring gears, two identical planet carriers and one sun gear that's a common sun gear to both of those sets of gears that gear configuration right there is called a simpson gear set named after mr howard simpson um, who developed a three-speed automatic transmission uh, gear set out of this design uh, quite a, a long time ago. I, I forget what year it was, but it was, I think in the 50s, 1950s, somewhere around there is when he patented uh, this design. So we have four planetary gear sets all stacked up right here. We have two, uh, for lack of a better word, simple planetary gear sets that are splined together and have a common carrier, um, but they're not a Raveno. It's just a a compound planetary gear set in the bottom that drives a Simpson gear set, which is a three-speed uh, here in the top. And so by holding and turning different pieces of these planetary gear sets, so we have four sun gears, four planet carriers, four annulus gears, by holding or driving or allowing to turn at slow speeds, uh, different parts of those gear sets, we can obtain 
at least uh, nine forward gears. All right, now we have an additional piece here. We, we have to have an output. Um, let me slide this out of the way here for a moment. We've got a cast iron piece right here that is bolted to the transaxle case. And it has the final drive gear right here uh, on a bearing with a big nut lo locked in place that when it rotates, it is going to turn the idler gear. On one of these, uh, oh, I must have it the other way. When it rotates, it will turn the idler gear. So there we go, just like that. And then the idler gear has the pinion on it for the final drive gear. right here. So this cast iron piece is what drives the idler gear. The idler gear drives, except I've got this backwards. Um, the idler gear drives the final drive where we have our axle shafts that connect to your front tires and wheel assemblies and, and propel you down the road. So that's our transmission and axle, hence transaxle uh, terminology here. All right, let me get these out of the way. Now back to this cast iron piece. It has some little notches right here that are connected to this output gear. And those notches, if we come back here to our four planetary gear sets, connect right here. There are four grooves here for those notches to spline into. So I'm just going to set this down, line those up, and once those are splined, they never come unsplined. They are always connected together. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our output drive gear connected to the P4, the fourth planetary carrier. All right, then we've got a couple other pieces <laughs> that go on top of this. We have this clutch hub right here for the E clutch that reaches all the way down and grabs the uh, P3 carrier, planet carrier. So it's gonna reach down in and grab that carrier. So if we apply this clutch, it'll turn the planet carrier of the rear planet carrier of the uh, Simpson gear set. And then last, we have the E clutch housing where we have teeth on the inside that there's a clutch pack that spline with teeth here. When this clutch is applied, it connects these two pieces together. There are splines on the inside of this hole here that splines to this input shaft down in here. So now if I set this down in, it splines with the input shaft. So if, if the input shaft turns, so does this E-clutch housing. So now we've got the entire stack up here. Um, to make this demonstration work, I've had to take I had to take the stator support out of the transaxle because it has an air passage that allows us to go in and release the A dog clutch in the back of the transmission. The F dog clutch will be applied and released right here. The F dog clutch is in the front here. If you look at my other video, it applies and holds the Simpson planetary gear set sun gear from rotating and when it releases then it allows that sun gear to rotate. So depending on what gear we're in we, we may want that applied we may want it uh, released. All right so now I'm going to set this in our uh, wooden V blocks here and we will go through all nine forward gear ranges all the different gear ratios and 
through the uh, and through reverse also. So let me get this mounted up here in the back of the um, input housing here is a hole where we apply oil pressure to apply the A dog clutch. I'm just going to stick a, uh, a socket in here, half inch drive, 9 16 socket to give me something to put into the, the V blocks to hold it in place. So we'll set that there. Put this one here. Here in the V-blocks, it's important for me to squish, get everything held together as it would be inside the, uh, the transmission. Um, it looks like we may not have everything lined up. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now we do. Right there. Okay. So, one more time as far as parts are concerned. We have the input shaft that starts clear over here, but it goes to the back of the trans axle, and then we have the A dog clutch, which is up inside here. We have the B clutch, which is a rotating clutch that rotates this housing. We have the C clutch, which is a brake that stops this housing from rotating. We have the D clutch, which is a brake that stops this housing from rotating. And then we have the E clutch in the front here that when it applies, it forces the, the planet carrier to rotate. And then we have the F dog clutch in the front here also that either stops or starts, or I'm sorry, it either stops the Simpson planetary gear set sun gear from rotating or allows it to rotate. All right, this cast iron housing does not rotate. So I'm going to take just a screwdriver, stick it in one of these oil passage holes and let it wedge up against the table here so that um, it doesn't rotate as we do the uh, demonstration here. And then I've got a, a, a chisel or punch holder that I'm going to attach to the um, input shaft where the torque converter turbine would attach. And that'll give me something to hang on to and simulate the turbine in the torque converter rotating parts in the in the transaxle. All right, so once again, this gear right here, this output gear if it rotates, it's what makes the vehicle uh, move down the road. All right, at this point, I have no idea if the A dog clutch is in the applied or the released position. So um, there is a chart that tells us which clutch pack uh, is applied, which one is released, whether the dog clutch is applied or released, or the two dog clutches are applied or released. Uh, in each gear. And so let's start with um, first gear. The A dog clutch is supposed to be applied. So the A dog clutch is the one down in here, that little sleeve that slid back and forth. I just want to make sure it's applied. So I'm just going to come in with some compressed air and come up in here and hit it with the air and rotate things just to make sure that that um, sleeve is engaged and connected to that rear, the P1 uh, annulus gear, which is also the P2 sun gear. So that is applied. Um, the F dog clutch in the front of the transaxle needs to be applied for first gear. And so on the uh, cast iron housing here, there's some oblong holes. There's an adapter that, that reaches through from the valve body. And there's two adapters that supply oil. Uh, let's see, I marked these. This is the apply, this is the release. So I'm going to stick this in here, 
for the apply side and just make sure it's applied. I'm pretty sure it was, but I just hit air to it to make sure it's applied. It pops this little adapter out when it, <laughs> when it is applied. And so we've got the A dog clutch applied. We've got the F dog clutch applied. The only thing we don't have for first gear now is the D brake. So remember, we've got the B, the C, the D. This D clutch right here acts as a brake. And so we are going to have it We're going to hold it still and turn the input shaft and with the two dog clutches applied um, that should give us first gear. Now we have a first gear ratio of 4.7 to 1 which is quite the gear ratio. Um, or that's a low gear ratio. That will give you some rapid acceleration. That's, that's a pretty impressive uh, gear ratio. Now I've marked right here on the gear teeth a yellow mark. You can see, and let me zoom in just a little bit more on our detail camera here. There we go. So we've got yellow marks right here. And as I rotate this input shaft from the, the turbine, um, I should have to rotate this input shaft 4.7 times to get one complete revolution of this output shaft gear. So let's give it a try, make sure everything's working like it should. So here's, nope, we're slipping. Oh, phew, I don't have the D clutch applied. So let's, let's get this back up here. Pay attention, John. All right, so we've got our yellow mark right there. <laughs> we can't go anywhere unless we apply the D, D clutch, the D brake. So I will hold the D brake from rotating. Now let's see if we get a 4.71 uh, gear ratio. So here we go. Here's one turn, two turns, three, four, and about three quarters of a turn, 4.7 turns of the input to one turn of the output gear that turns the idler gear that turns the final drive. So that's the 4.7 to one first gear ratio. Uh, that this transaxle has. All right, now for second gear, we keep the A dog clutch applied, we keep the F dog clutch applied, but now instead of holding the D clutch, we hold the C clutch. So now we should have a gear ratio of 2.84 to one. So we're just simply going to release this brake and apply this brake. So release D, apply C. And now our yellow mark, it should take 2.84, almost three turns of the input to get one turn of our output gear. So here we go. Here's one, two, and a little more than two and three quarters, 2.84 to one gear ratio for um, second gear. All right, third gear. Um, this time for third gear, we keep the A dog clutch on. The A dog clutch, by the way, the one in the back here, it stays applied in first through seventh gear. And the F dog clutch in the front here stays applied first through fourth gear. So we're, in, we're going for third gear now. For third gear, we release both brakes. We don't hold any brakes anymore. And now we apply the B clutch. Well, the B clutch is this rear one back here. And so we... The B clutch connects the input shaft that runs all the way through, which is a center hub. It connects it to this outer hub here. So to connect those two pieces together, I'm just going to take this paper towel and wedge it in there to act like a set of clutch plates to connect those two pieces together. All right, so now here we are in third gear, we should have a gear ratio of 1.91 to one. So almost two turns of the input to get one full turn of the output here. Um, 
Let me straighten this out here. Okay, so here we go. Here's one turn and almost two turns of the input. 1.91, that's almost two. Two turns of the input to get one turn of our output gear uh, rotation here. All right, so that was third gear. Now let's go to fourth gear. In fourth gear, we release this B clutch. So we have to pull that, pull my paper towel clutch pack out. And now we apply the E clutch. Well, the E clutch is this clutch pack that's up front here. And the E clutch is going to stay applied now from fourth all the way through ninth gear. Now the E clutch has an inner and an outer housing just like this B clutch does, but it's all enclosed in the front here. So instead of uh, shoving a paper towel in there, because it's too difficult for me to take this all apart and do that, I'm going to take a sheet metal screw. And yes, I know we don't put sheet metal screws in transaxles, but for this demonstration, this is just a training transmission, um, I'm going to just barely start a sheet metal screw in one of the oil holes of the inner hub. So I've run a, a screw basically from this outer housing to the inner housing through a hole. I haven't damaged anything. And that applies the E clutch. So for fourth gear, we will still keep the F dog clutch applied, which is the front one, the A dog clutch in the back, and now the E clutch. And we should have a gear ratio of 1.38 to 1. So where's our yellow mark? Here's our yellow mark right here. Now with a little less than 1.3 or less than one and a half turns, 1.38 turns, we should get a full turn of the output gear. So here's one and not quite a half turn over here. 1.38 turns to one. There's our fourth gear on this. Uh, transmission, transaxle. It's a transaxle, not a transmission. A transmission doesn't have an axle built in, transaxle does. All right, now let's go to fifth gear. Uh, fifth gear is actually direct drive on this transaxle. Now this blows me away because that means sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth are all overdrives. I have never seen another automatic transmission or transaxle that has four overdrives. This is an amazing uh, design. I've seen double overdrive on many six-speed and uh, even eight-speed uh, transmissions, but never quadruple uh, overdrives. So in fifth gear, to get a direct drive of one-to-one, -one, we have to apply the B-clutch again. So I will wedge my paper towel back in here to simulate the clutch pack being applied. Okay, now we should get one full turn, direct to drive. One turn of the input shaft to equal one turn of the output shaft. Fifth gear, oh, there's one more thing we gotta do. Uh, the F dog clutch, F dog clutch. The F dog clutch is the one in the front. It needs to be released or we're gonna lock everything up. So let me grab the air here. To release the F dog clutch, if you recall, we have to come back around to the top here, and this time we'll hit air to the release passage. Listen for the clunk. Let me hit it one more time just to make sure. Yeah, it's released. So we just released the F dog clutch because it only stays on first through fourth gears. And now I will put our little screwdriver back in to hold the cast iron piece in place. And now we should get direct drive. One turn in equals one turn out. So here we go. Yeah. Whoop. Something is slipping. What's slipping? Oh. We're still slipping. Um, with all my messing around the uh, a dog clutch here in this demonstration can come 
can wiggle itself loose. Let me make sure it's still applied. Yeah, it wasn't. I heard it, heard it clunk. Okay, so with that still applied, the A dog, because it stays applied all the way through seventh. Let's go back here. Here's our yellow mark. <laughs> now let's try the one to one ratio again. Here we go. Yes, perfect. One turn in equals one turn out. So there's our yellow mark. So that is fifth gear. That is our one to one direct drive gear ratio. Now sixth gear, we leave the A dog in the back applied. We hold the C brake. So that's this one. And we leave the E. Uh, we leave E applied, which is in the front, which means we have to release the B with my paper towel back here. So now our sixth gear ratio is 0 0.81. It's a 19% overdrive. So now we should get a full turn of the output gear with less than one full turn of the input. So here we go. Oh, I have to, what am I missing? I have to hold the C brake. Okay. So holding C, here we go. The output gear is turning faster than the input shaft. And there we go. 80% turn of the input gives us a 100% turn of the output gear. So there's sixth gear. Now seventh gear is 0.7 to 1. It's a 30% overdrive. So now instead of holding the C clutch, we're just going to move and hold the D clutch. So now we should get three, a little less than three quarters of a turn around to get uh, our seventh gear here. So here we go. It's going much faster. And there's our, yeah. So three quarters of a turn in equals one full turn out in seventh gear. All right, eighth gear, we finally release the A dog clutch in the back here. And to release that, I have to come in through the stator support. There's an air passage. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear the clunk. Hear that little dunk? That was the A dog clutch releasing. It releases that P1 annulus, P2 sun gear combination. Um, and the F dog is released also. So both dog clutches are released. So now we just drive with the E clutch in the front. That's our, my sheet metal screw. And now we actually hold both the C and the D clutches from rotating. So here's our yellow mark. Now we are at a 0 0.58. This is a 42% overdrive, which is quite the overdrive. So I'll hold these from rotating. Little less than half, or little less than half of a turn of the input will give us one full turn here. So here we go, and there's our 0 0.58 to one eighth gear ratio, and then ninth gear ratio, which is a crazy gear ratio, 0 0.48 to one, a 52% overdrive. You'd you'd have to be going up. I think above 80 miles an hour to even get into this gear ratio or be going downhill um, to get into ninth gear, but there it is. Um, it'll keep your engine RPM down in the range where you get the best fuel economy. Um, but for ninth gear, we drive the B clutch again. So we're going to get our paper towel back in here. Okay, and then we're going to hold the D brake only, this one, and drive with the E, that sheet metal one. And now, with less than half of one turn of the input, we should get a full turn of the output. So here we go. Wow, it is really going fast. That is quite the overdrive. I didn't even get to half a turn. We got a full turn of the output. There is ninth gear. So we've just been through first through ninth gear on this nine speed automatic transaxle. So there's only one gear left, that's reverse. Let's take a look at that. For reverse, we want the B clutch driving. So that's the paper towel. We will leave that in there. We want the D brake holding. So that's this one. And we want the F dog, which is the one in the front, applied. 
So that means I need to take the screw out of the E clutch. There we go. We need to reapply the F dog. <laughs> so we'll put the F dog back in place. Okay, it went forward. We'll lock those together. Let me just double check. There we go. So we've got the F dog applied. Let me just double check. We're going to drive with the B, which is in the back here, a paper towel. We're going to hold the D and drive, or hold the D and have the F dog applied. So we're just going to drive with the B. So now we should have a reverse gear ratio of 3.8 to 1. Here's our yellow paint mark at the top here. We should get almost four full turns of the input. Here's one. Oh, my cast iron housing is slipping. I didn't get the paper towel or the screwdriver in place. Let me get that in place. Get our paint mark back here. Okay, reverse. Almost four turns to one, 3.8. So here we go. One, two, three, not quite four, there's our yellow paint mark, and there is four to one, or 3.8 to one gear reduction on this uh, ZF 9HP, nine speed automatic transaxle. What an amazing design. Um, that's quite the, <laughs> quite the bit of engineering. Um, it has up to 10 solenoids on the uh, valve body. Uh, this model, uh, can come with a uh, an, well, an, a solenoid that controls the parking pulp, so there's no cable between the shifter and the and the transaxle, or you can get one that that is with. So there's two different models that Chrysler uses. I don't know what Honda, Acura, Land Rover, or which one they use, but uh, there's a couple of different models uh, depending on which which one of those you have. Uh, there's a special oil level checking procedure. This transaxle requires a special oil for this transaxle. It is not regular automatic transmission fluid. It's more of a yellowish green tinted, almost gear oil looking uh, fluid that goes in these things. You do not want to uh, mix uh, the improper oil in here. Uh, the fluid level checking procedure for uh, Chrysler's, there's a plug in the back of the transmission that you take out and stick a special dipstick tool in to measure the fluid level at a specific temperature as measured on the scan tool. Uh, for Hondas, you get this, the, the fluid at a specific temperature as measured on the scan tool, but there is no special dipstick. There's just a plug on the side of the transaxle by the final drive that you pull out, much like a rear differential, uh, and check the oil level that way. But it must be, like any other automatic transmission, at a specific transmission fluid level. If you check it when it's too hot, it'll be overfilled. If you check it when it's too cold, you'll add, or I'm sorry, if you check it when it's too hot, fluid will come out and you'll, it'll end up being underfilled. If you check it when it's too cold, the fluid will appear to be too low and you'll add fluid and then it will be overfilled. Um, it does have a filter in it, but you cannot get to the transmission filter without separating the entire transmission case. So it's one of those that you only change on an overhaul of the transaxle. Uh, other than that, I didn't see anything uh, in this transmission that we hadn't seen in other uh, transmissions. Um, uh, once again, a unique design, uh, very impressive uh, transaxle. Uh, as far as drivability though, um, since it has nine speeds, uh, people were complaining when we had six speeds and then eight speeds and um, now imagine nine speeds. If we have nine speeds, this transmission can be, can appear to be quite busy because it's trying to select the proper gear ratio for the vehicle speed and acceleration or deceleration that the driver is um, requesting. And so some people may interpret this as a busy shifting transmission. Well, it has nine speeds. It's going to be shifting more than a regular 
or not a regular, but a, a transmission with a lower number of speeds. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the transmission. It's just it has more gears. Those more gears are good, though, because it allows your engine to stay in its peak RPM band, which gives you the best fuel economy, the best emissions, and the best performance. So this has been a demonstration of the ZF9HP automatic transaxle. Have a good day.